great programming and uh, Von Harper and yeah. So they weren't afraid to play all different kinds of genres at one time, right? Oh, that's right. Everything, yeah. Anything he wanted. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Frankie would break records. He wouldn't care if anybody in the country was playing it. Yeah. If he liked it. He would go with it. Yeah, I remember coming out of a nightclub and they were playing like an SOS band, and then they played the Who, I mean, it's front. So that, that those were those were some great times. The voices that you heard, uh, you hear, of course, Chris Jasper, Rock and Roll Hall of Famer with the Isley Brothers, and his son Michael Jasper were. Well familiar with both of them, and awful nice to have family yeah. Jasper in the house. Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah, so uh, things have been going great. You guys are always you don't you don't sit idle back home in the home studio and just kick no, up, and no. you're all you're always writing, <laughs> always working on something. Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. So so the new c- CD is called the One, yes, which uh, the one. I gotta move this. I can't see you guys. So. There we go. I didn't break anything. <laughs> but, that was a cool sound, though. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So uh, the CD, the one, how many, you know, the tracks coming off of there, were you working on specifically for this, or you bring stuff out of the catalog, uh, the archives? Yeah, these songs were written specifically for this album, uh, and um, it was just one of those things where I just, I just said to myself, like, well, I've done a lot of work, you know, in the past, you know, with the Isley Brothers and I suggest Risley. And um, a lot of things that you know I had done on some of those records weren't uh, put on the credits, you know, like playing bass on some stuff, playing guitar on some stuff, mm-hmm. you know, because I was a keyboard player, so the label would just you know put me down as keyboards, you know. Right. But I did a lot more than that, so uh, I wanted this album to reflect that, you know, all the instruments that I played and um, the type of songs that I wrote, you know. Um, you know, heavy ballads and, of course, the heavy funk. So that's what's on this record. Being, being in music for since you were a kid, and have you s- noticed your songwriting, you know, process has changed a bit? Um, uh, mostly what's changed is lyrics, mm-hmm. you know, the direction of the lyric. Right. Um, and um, I have seen from, since I first started, you know, I, I have, you know, advanced in that area because... You know, the more you do something, mm-hmm. you know, you, you, you tend to, you know, get better at it as it goes along. How about as far as instruments, starting on what instrument? Have you changed? Or is it usually keyboards? Yes, usually, usually the keyboards. That's where everything mm-hmm. usually starts, you know. Okay. I wrote right. Caravan of Love on guitar, but, okay. uh, you know, some most of my ideas will come from practicing on the keyboard. Yeah. Our special guest today... Mr. Chris Jasper and his son Michael Jasper, metronomic mm-hmm. DJ producer, mm-hmm. videographer, film. He, he's working real hard on his film project, and uh, we're going to talk all about that with Michael. But uh, let's get into some music right now, right here at WBOF. This is uh, from the one which people can see. We got a TV camera up there, oh, <laughs> if they cool. can see. Uh, it's from the one, and we are going to play the title track kicking off right here. How uh, do you, how tough is it for you to decide which which track to feature leading off on um, each, well, each record? Sometimes I get opinions, you know? okay, <laughs> because uh, uh, I'll end up liking you know maybe a few you know, and then I'll say okay, well for the first release you know I'll, I'll let a lot of people hear it mm-hmm. and and get their feedback from it. So that's what I did with this one. Uh, and uh, everybody said the one, so that's said, right. Okay, <laughs> let's go with that one. <laughs> and the family also, they yeah. they, they have their uh, picks too. Oh yeah, yeah. I butt in. I butt in. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> we get them for, for everybody. You know? Right, <laughs> everybody's creative in the Jasper family. You can go to chrisjasper.com, and uh, this is from Chris Jasper's mm-hmm. the one right here on the upper room with Joe Kelly and W. All right, brand new music, of course, from Chris Jasper, The One. That is the title track, and uh, it's available on all download formats. And uh, you can also go to chrisjasper.com, goldcitymusic.goldcityrecords.com, goldcitymusic.com. Okay. And uh, you're out there promoting it, and your head's spinning with all the interviews. And uh, Margie runs the record company. And what's. uh, Doing all these interviews, we were we were online when you were in a chat. Uh, DJ Sassy and, and some of the people affiliated with their their radio thing. Yeah. What, what do you like about the uh, the radio? You know the technology, the advances like that. Well, I like I like hearing directly from the people who listen and buy the music. Right. Uh, couldn't do that before. 
you know. Mm-hmm. Right. And, um, you know, you get their feedback, you get, you know, uh, how the music, you know, uh, affects their life, you know. It, you, you hear all kinds of things, and it's, it's really, really a great thing to talk directly to the people who buy the music. And, and for me, that's, that's the big thing for me. You, uh, of course, have a family all involved in artistic things. Um, your son did the uh, pictures again, the yeah, photography, Nick. Nick. Nick yeah, cover, right. You know, uh, and, and uh, he's really, really great at that. He, he also does animation, you know, for film and things like that. So uh, Nick is very talented. And another talented mm-hmm. son of yours sits right here. We've well, known him since he was a uh, <laughs> senior, going, uh, thinking about coming to Fairfield University, maybe a junior back then, but... Yeah. yeah, I think I was a senior. Yeah, I was a, a senior. senior. Uh, I'd already, I think I'd already accepted coming here. Oh, okay. And nice. uh, yeah, that that's when I had uh, addictive. That's right. <laughs> that cool, one. Cool T-shirt with the MJ on the front. And okay. The picture yeah. Right there. You yeah. Grow, you grown up since those days, but a know, little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to think so. Right. But <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, uh, as an artist, I have, uh, I've completely changed uh i didn't really know who i was then you know i was a little young you know ambitious but now i have a direction and a, a message i think i can share with people you know that's and when, the main when difference. you first uh you know you grew up of course your dad involved in music and your mom involved in music mm-hmm. when, when did you start to think i want to ta- try to tackle this i mean uh we got the baby videos. I was like three singing at the mic, you know. <laughs> You're the youngest of the family? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, it's just, it's always been there, you know, since piano lessons, since, uh, since I was like four, you know. Uh, but I didn't, I never took it as a serious step until uh, like high school, you know, when I okay, right. started writing, you know. Um, now, now uh, we played, of course, the CD Addictive with New York Vibe on there mm-hmm. and all the tracks like that. Mm-hmm. Those four years of college, you're in. You, you're almost coming up on a, a semester to go, right? You, yep. read, you register for the the classes for your final go round. Mm-hmm. Got them all. Yep. What, you, you told me I, I saw you on campus. You were telling me about uh, your capstone that you've been working on. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the project that's been happening? Uh, yeah. Basically, uh, I'm just writing a feature length uh, screenplay for a movie, and uh, the missions to get that rolling uh nick might work with me with some artwork and uh maybe pitch to some companies get something going you know with that so do you, do you want to go in that direction or you just keep it keep it open for everything right uh i want to keep it open but right. hey whatever works yeah you'll be <laughs> doing the score to the soundtrack <laughs> all the incidental <laughs> music and everything like that and, whatever yeah. you know happens uh right. I'm, but i'm open i'm open right. to everything and uh hey, you've been nice enough that you've got a new project coming out you can go to metronomicmikejasper.com. Tell us about mm-hmm. metronomic. Uh, how'd, you, how'd you get that? Uh, derived from, I guess, metronome. You know, I right. just, I was just talking with, you know, again, the family, just trying to, like, get an idea. Hey, you know, what, what do I want as a performance name, you know? Right. And uh, metronomic just came up, you know, and it just, and I kind of, like, stuck. I kind of liked it, so. So uh, you go to the website, metronomicmikejasper.com. And mm-hmm. what, what have you brought along? We've got, uh, how many tracks here? Two. This is this is one track. Oh, this one track. Is, okay. uh, yeah, this is the uh, name of the album, uh, Dreams. Okay. So yeah, that's so, so we got the the track Turn Up, right? Uh, no, this is just Dreams, this, right? Oh, yeah, Dreams. Just, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. So we got Dreams, and uh, this is from Metronomic Mike Jasper. He is here along with his dad, Chris Jasper, and his mom, Margie Jasper. We're happy to have them here at WBOF. So thanks for letting us world premiere it here. Oh. Mike Jasper is Chris Jasper from the one that is his uh, latest and greatest. And you're always uh, talking about writing the song, and that's the importance of the song and the lyrics. Rocking the foundation. G- give us a, yeah. a course on that. Yeah, that, that came from um, being, you know, uh, live out on out on stage, watching other bands actually, you mm-hmm. know, from the from the wings. And uh, what, what used to happen is when a when a band was really you know playing heavy you know some heavy funk like right. for example Larry Graham he was on the he was on the show with us oh okay yeah and I remember uh, being on the on, on the side of the stage watching them as they were playing mm-hmm. and what it felt like the floor felt like you right. know yeah you, you could feel the vibrations in the floor and everything you know as they were playing the heavy bass and the drums you know mm-hmm. and um, that's kind of what this is about you know rock the foundation. You know, uh, really, you know, making you feel the music. Yeah, he had. Uh, I've seen him a bunch of times. You, yeah. you feel it right here. Oh yeah, yeah, you feel it, man. Yeah. Right now, now, 
of course, the Izzy Brothers, a phenomenal band, and you, you wrote some of the biggest hits throughout their, their catalog and everything like that. Recently, uh, a few months ago, you flew out to California, as did your son Michael and your wife Margie, yeah. mm-hmm. for a tremendous honor, the Lifetime Achievement Award for the Grammys, right? That was right, yeah, right. Yeah, January. yeah. Now, now we know the Izzy Brothers, and you know, you guys broke up and you went on to your own things. What's it like getting together back with the fellas and for something like that? Uh, after was, all, the, what, what are the emotions that go through all that? Well, you know, it was, so much was happening. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't enough time to really, you know, get a, a good conversation going, you know what I mean? Because as mm-hmm. soon as we got there, uh, I had a few minutes to talk to Ernie and I hadn't talked to him in a long time. So, you know, it was good to, you know, talk to him for, for maybe 15 minutes or so. Uh, but then, yeah. you know, there was a red carpet after that and people were doing interviews, yeah. you know, pictures. And then the ceremony started. <laughs> right. Know, it wasn't much time to actually get into any, you know, good conversation. But, right. you know, it was good to see him, you know. Now, no, fans on the outside, we always wonder our favorite mm-hmm. bands, they dissolve and you, or they come back and it's not for too long. And then we're like, how come they can't keep it together like that? Mm-hmm. Well, is it really that tough to keep different personalities and different interests together for that long? And well, it's it's um, you do have to work at it. I right. have to say that um, because you know people are different. You know, people have different you know goals. They have different you know likes and dislikes. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, sometimes it is difficult. Um, it was a little easier for us because you know we knew each, uh, we knew each other all our lives right so in that kind of situation you know you know who they are you don't have to worry about you know where they're coming from most of the time however <laughs> you <Right>. know <laughs> uh, there is a big age difference between the younger members of the Isaac brothers and the older brothers right yeah and i think that age difference made it sometimes difficult to communicate you know to to the older guys right so um you know that I think that was the biggest bridge that we right. had. Right. Yeah. That age difference. And of course, with money and all that, yeah. not, all different yeah. bands. That's always mm-hmm. a big, big factor, of yeah. course. Yeah. Now, now, how, how many times a year do you get asked? Are you guys ever gonna come back together? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Too many. A don't lot. don't throw anything a at lot. me. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember because um, we we're friends with uh, Chris France and Tina Weymouth, and they're they were inducted for with the Talking Heads, and uh, I think. Uh, you know, they, they would like to get together with David Byrne and the Talking Heads, but I think it was only for the Hall of Fame induction that yeah. they got back together again. I guess it's it's tough, right? Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. You know, sometimes those things, you know, you can't you can't go. You know, once the bridge is burned, you can't go back across it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and of course, you've been uh, doing tremendous things since Isley Jasper and Isley, and of course the Chris Jasper and Gold City Music. And yeah. um, now it must be awful nice to be able to collaborate with your son. Who, who's a great musician and producer and how, how do you work together let's talk about the one record because I know Michael mm-hmm. was yeah. an integral part of it mm-hmm. well see what would happen was um, you know Michael is, he's, he's really great at programming rhythms mm-hmm. so what happens is, when I get an idea for a rhythm I'll say okay Mike here's the basic thing I want to do you know kick drum snare drum here maybe hi-hat there I said now you know if you feel anything else you know just Right. Go with Feel free to, you know. Go. Yeah. And, you know, he really does some great things with the percussion, you know. So, uh, you know, he worked with me on this entire album. Do you usually mm-hmm. fine-tune and lay down the, the beats by yourself or when he's in the studio? Oh, we, we, I'm always with him because he, he has to tell me, you know, kind of what he wants. Oh, and okay. uh, right. when he's kind of describing it, I'm getting a feel for it, too, at the same time. And I'll add a fill here and there and be like, hey, how you like that? And sometimes, yeah, click. Sometimes, you know, we, we discuss more. Um but yeah, we we uh, he just tells me what he wants, and I uh, you know program it in and uh, play it in, and then he goes to work. <laughs> he it. goes yeah. to work on it. <laughs> yeah, so it must be, it must be a great great, great feeling. Great to work together. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. sure. And, mm-hmm. and you've got uh, you got everybody in the family is doing well with their. One of your sons plays bass, right? Yeah, Chris. Mm-hmm. Chris, yeah. okay, he's, yeah. He's he's a, you know on the jazz side. He's okay, like right. Jazz, so. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, he does play bass. Well, we're going to get into some more music, and you can uh, actually go to chrisjasper.com, goldcitymusic.com, metronomicmikejasper.com, all the great sites, and, of course, Facebook. And mm-hmm. You guys big on the Twitter? Are you you do the Twitter? Not no. too much. you <laughs> got to be an Instagram <laughs> guy, right? Uh, SoundCloud, though. Oh, SoundCloud, that's, that's right, yeah. yeah. That's a yeah. big new thing. 
before we get in, let me ask you about um, you know, stuff like SoundCloud, full tracks up there. People, you know, can listen to the full track. Uh, yeah, I, how I do you guys feel about that? Part, right. Yeah. But, you know, the downloading part. The piracy. Know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I feel like not, they did, took money out of your pocket, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, right. uh, I would encourage everybody, you know, if you like music, if you love music, you know, buy it because um, that's the way the artist keeps going. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's going to guarantee you that, you know, new music will keep coming. Right. Uh, you know, there's no saying about, you know, you get what you pay for. Right. So yeah. if you don't pay for anything... Right, you know, I'm not gonna get any. That's right, and and especially independent so, yeah. artists. You know, yeah. you're, you're gonna stop that that flow of music if you don't pay for it. Exactly. Know? Mm-hmm. I, I know anything I want, I buy it. Mm-hmm. You know, I because I respect the artist. You know, I know what it means to them, so I won't I won't share files or anything like that. I just right. Won't do it. All right. So that is uh, Chris Jasper and Mike Jasper. Their their stance on the downloading and stuff like that, which it's always always interesting. The music business in a perpetual yeah, motion. Right? So much, oh know, yeah, you know you can do so yeah. much. Yeah, but, you know the the wisdom is, of it all is not if you can do it, right. but should you do it? Exactly. Yeah, and that's right. that's when wisdom comes in, and you shouldn't really do that because it's going to stop the flow of music. Right. That is Chris Jasper, and this is uh, still in love. You dedicate this uh, album to your wife, oh, Margie. Yeah, Margie. Yeah, she's oh. here. She'll be here in a second. <laughs> well, you didn't have to wait outside there. <laughs> Margie, of course, uh, manages and runs Gold City Music, and uh, we talked about her days down at WBLS in New York City, which Frankie Crocker and company. So uh, I'm sure you might have had your lovely wife Margie in mind when you wrote this one. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, actually, all my love songs, you know. Uh, you know. How, many, how many years of marriage? Uh, thirty. It'll be 32 in February. Oh, that's great. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. So uh, this is uh, Still in Love from the one, Chris Jasper. Chris Jasper's brand new one is the one that is still in love. And we got to give props to Margie, who's uh, on a project right now. We'll we'll tell you about it towards the end of uh, their stay here, the Jaspers. And uh, recently, Chris, you went down to Atlantic City and and did a performance there. And and I know Michael was involved in that as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah, There was uh, the uh, National R&B Society uh, had a... um, had a thing down there, an awards uh, kind of a ceremony, mm-hmm. and um, I, I did a track. I did a couple of tracks. I did I did the one, and then I did Caravan of Love. Okay. Uh, and it was very nice, you know. Meet a lot of people, see some, you know, people I hadn't seen in a while. So, uh, very nice gathering down there. So some of the same people still in the business, doing a lot of stuff. Yeah. 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 Right. You know, some of the some of the older groups, you know, some of the doo-wop groups, you know, back right. in the day. Oh yeah. You know. Right. And um, it was very, very nice. There was a lot of performances, you know, and everybody did tracks. Right, you know, yeah. But um, you know, a lot of performances and uh, very, well, very well done, I thought. Right. And Mike, you were down there, Atlantic City. Your first time down there? Yep. Yeah. And it was also my 21st, too. So. Oh, okay, right, yeah. <laughs> Kill two birds with one stone. And he, and, and he still looks like, uh, you know, he still got the, you guys all, you know, staying young looking, so. I hope at 21. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so kind of young, you know. <laughs> yeah, if I said otherwise, <laughs> you might slap me in the face. Yeah. Um, it was great, though. Right. It, was, it was great yeah. to see all the right. performances and, and him up there. Yeah. It was great. It was a good time. Let, let me ask you this. This is your senior year here at Fairfield University and balancing mm-hmm. the art. A, a life, like probably a lot of your friends and fellow students have an experience. I mean, your dad, mm-hmm. Rock and Roll Hall of Famer, growing up and, you know, seeing your dad do his thing, and then you got into it. How, how do you balance and do you tell a lot of people what what you're into and are you pretty low-key about it? Um, I would say uh, I'm pretty reserved about it until like, you know, I, I don't want, I usually try to let them get to know me as me, you know, first. Right. And then right. after a while they kind of find out, you know, or I talk about it, but um, I, I'm not the guy to flaunt it or to, you know. You know, yeah. be one of those people, you know, so I how am pretty How about when you take a music class here and it comes up the Isley <laughs> Brothers and someone's talking junk about the Isley Brothers? <laughs> then you speak up? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's actually kind of my thing is that I, at the end of the class, I'll, I'll usually tell the guy and he, oh, okay, he would, yeah. he would, you know, you know, be like, oh, what? Like, yeah. he had no idea. Why didn't you tell me? You <laughs> yeah. could have had know? your dad down for, for a, a session. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so uh, tell us about your plans for for the remaining part of the senior year? Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm working on this album right now, uh, trying to finish that up by next, you know, early next year, get that yeah. out. Uh, Going to release Dreams within the next month, so mm-hmm. uh, 
that's gone. And, uh, you know, balancing that with work is it's a challenge, but um, making headway with that. And I, like I talked about before, we're doing the uh, screenplay too. Right. So I got a lot of, just juggling a lot of stuff, but. You're you going to stay in this area or you're going to head out to California? <laughs> um, I don't know. I'm kind of psyched out about earthquakes. Okay. I don't know, I don't know if I can handle that. <laughs> Yeah, you're, gonna, you're gonna be an East Coast guy. Yeah, yeah, I love New York. Well, we get East Coast. Uh, we get earthquakes in Bridgeport. Yeah, yeah. There was one, I guess. But really? Yeah, yeah. Hey, but I love New York. New York's yeah. where I want to oh, be. Oh yeah, yeah. You wrote songs about it, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, there you go. New York vibe. That that's it. New York vibe parts one and two, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, we got to get into some more music. The Jaspers are here. I want to thank Margie for going back and forth and working on a project here. <laughs> I don't know if it was successful or not, but. Uh, we're going to uh, get into, uh, I'm not going to say my favorite track, but one of my favorites off the record, Man Up. Oh, and, uh, yeah, you, yeah. You, you, you didn't uh, forget to tell the people, you know, you got the funk in you all the time, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. this is the other side. You know, a lot of people know about the ballads, you know. Mm. Uh, right. For the Love of You, Caravan of Love, you know, Insatiable Woman, all those things. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the funk is also part of me, too. And that was, you know, the pride. Take me to the next phase, you know. The heat is on. Live it up, right? You know, and that's just another. The, the man up is just another uh, song that has those ingredients in it, you know. So let's give a listen to this. This is Chris Jasper for the one. Want to thank uh, Chris and Michael Jasper and Margie. They're here, and uh, you guys got another twenty minutes or so. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Okay. All right. This is. Uh, Man Up, from that's another stellar track from the new release from Chris Jasper, the one that is called Right Now. And uh, that's cool on, on your records. You're not uh, afraid to stretch out on the tunes, six-minute song here and there, right? Yeah, because yeah. Um, especially on this song, it kind of lent itself to that kind of thing because what we what used to happen when we used to record records, you know, uh, like in the, in the 70s, uh, in the early 70s especially, we used to all be in the studio together. Right. And, you know... When you would hit a groove, you know, you would kind of stay with it. You know, the band was, you know, uh, everybody was playing their parts right. You, you were feeling a nice groove. You would stay there, you mm -hmm. know. And that's where the, um, the the long songs came from, the part one and part twos came from. Because right. they, you would just extend the song out. You know, like that lady. We had a, a, the first part of it was, you know, the vocals. But then the last part was the, the instrumentation, you know. And um, that was the part two. Mm -hmm. So uh, this song was kind of reminiscent of that, you know, like, uh, I think it's almost like seven minutes and something. You know, right, so yeah. And that's that's what we used to do. We used to, you know, just stay on a, a groove and just jam. So that's right. kind of what this song Yeah, was. Those, those were nice times, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Chris Jasper, Mike Jasper here, Margie Jasper as well. And, and Margie sings on the record on about four or five of the tracks, right? Yeah, she does. Yeah. Yes. We got to get you on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Well, when, when's the solo record coming out for yourself? Uh, I've been waiting how many years? 30? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you, you're going to do it, right? I think so. I, I Eventually. Before I met him, before I met him, I was, I was doing some singing. And oh, okay. Actually, this underground disco hit that I did before. Oh, yeah. What was it? Oh, here we go. I can't tell you. It was so but underground, right? It was so oh, we don't want to get you. Uh, <laughs> you are anybody else. Knowing your long <laughs> background, you, you know when not to talk, right? <laughs> I was a bit of disco queen. I didn't even know it because they've been playing in the clubs and I didn't even know it. <laughs> oh, man. I saw it on the internet, and I didn't even know it. Oh, really? Right. <laughs> I never saw it. Done. So somebody owes Margie some money there, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All, all the times. And there were some great clubs in New York, right? Yeah. Back in the day, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it was yeah. Patrick Adams, if you ever heard of Patrick Adams. Oh, Patrick okay. Adams. The name, yeah, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was, what was the one? Uh, Paradise Beautiful. Garage? That was a club down there. A club, yeah, yeah. yeah. Studio oh, 54. Push, 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 push. Oh, yeah, yeah right, yeah. Yeah, we went to the Limelight Club. That was yeah, years ago. That was that was a wild club. Yeah. So we're reminiscing about the the New York City life. Michael, you didn't need to go to those clubs. They were a little mm. too wild. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wasn't New York, for that. We love New York, New York, but um, Michael's living a good life and he's working on new music. Um, if you were listening earlier in the program, maybe got a taste of of history. That wasn't the track we <laughs> yeah. wanted to play. Yeah. Michael's always yeah twisting things up and doing new versions of songs so what what did yeah. we listen to early in the show and what are we going to listen to uh, that was uh, another track that's on the album and the, the instrumentation is uh, the same but uh, I changed the vocals uh, that was from about a couple of years ago and I was like wait 
I heard something else. I heard something better. So uh, that was kind of a you know older version, right. uh, and that was Turn Up. And uh, this track is the single that's coming out. Uh, this is Dreams. It's the name of the album. Uh, so yeah. and, and if uh, Alicia Keys, if Maxwell's not in town to record a duet with her, Michael Jasper's ready for that, right? He's working and, and singing really well. <laughs> I'll sing right? background to Alicia. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> I'll, I mean, uh, if I if I can, I mean, I'll do it. But <laughs> right, <laughs> let her sing lead. You've been working with uh, someone real talented on on, on vocals, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Daryl Tukes. He uh, he he teaches part. Uh, he just comes in uh, uh, a couple hours every Sunday, uh, Saturday, and uh, he teaches me and another student. And uh, he's a great guy. He's worked with great uh, musicians like Aretha Franklin uh, all the way up till now. Uh, so he's a great guy, and he's really helping me harness my uh, my singing ability. So. All right. Yeah. We're going to be hearing about more of that, and hopefully Michael will stop by again. And uh, this is Dreams. This is the real dream <laughs> from Michael Jasper, world premiere. Brand new music from Mr. Michael Jasper. He's one of your classmates. You know him on campus in his senior year. That is, of course, Dreams from Michael Jasper. Like like the new sound, Mike. Hey, thank you. Thank yeah. you. We've, uh, we also have Chris Jasper here and. The one, tell us uh, the plans, you know, we were talking off air about the holidays and what do you guys do to relax during the time? You, you'll have another guy back at home eating the food, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we just you know, do regular stuff, you know, just right. family, mostly fam- you know, time with family. Right. That's, that's it, you know. And, um, uh, oh, we were, we were also talking about the um, the new compilation. Oh, yeah, let's touch on that. The season and and right. the rest of the year, too, but it's yeah. called Thank You, Jesus. And it's uh, 20 songs. Okay. And it's, you know, available on uh, CD Baby, you know, for downloads. Right. Uh, so, it's, you know, that's that's the newest thing that's available, too. Right. Uh, in addition to the new album. And all the links on the, your own website, chrisjasper.com. Yes, chrisjasper.com. And, and you've been doing a ton of interviews, interviews from overseas. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. People loving loving what you do. They. So, oh, yeah. They love the new album. Yeah. And yeah. That's, that's all I right. get, you know. Yeah. And, we're just getting it to as many people as we can, but you know we just can't do it fast enough right. time, because every day somebody asks, you know, hey, give us the MP3s, you know, we want to play it, you know. Right, so, right. Uh, you that, you uh, find um, more radio stations want MP3s or the hard disk? Yeah, the MP3s. Yeah, yeah. Most people want that, but then mm-hmm. you know some people they want the actual CD too. Right. Um, you know, and I've signed a lot of them for people. You know, they want they want a signed copy. So. Right. Um, but mostly the MP3, yeah. Now, now on this record, we're going to go out with this track. Uh, you, you tackled one of the one of the greats, Marvin Gaye, mm. yes. and uh, what's going on with a great version of your own? Uh, when when you do somebody else's song like that, what goes into that? Uh, how are you going to approach that particular cut? Well, yeah, you know, um, I know I wanted, I didn't want to stray too far from what he did, but then I wanted to, you know, add some things of my own you know like mm-hmm. I'm, I'm make, basically I'm a keyboard player and I wanted that to be a feature of the song too uh, but I, I did this song because it was uh, it was really a special album that he released uh, when it was first released it kind of changed the way people um, you know, did albums it was a concept album one f- song flowed you know into the next and it was it kind of revolutionary in, in how he did that so I thought it was an important record at the time, and it's still relevant. And he was always one of my biggest influences, Marvin Gaye. Did you ever get a Sam chance to meet him? Yeah, I met him. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, you know, he liked he liked my work too, which is kind of wow. blew my mind because oh yeah, right. ever, ever since I was yeah. a kid, I've right. seen his songs, you know, all the time. You know? Right. And it's just a great thrill to be able to meet him. Like yeah. That. Yeah, I can remember exactly where I was hearing he, he passed yeah. away. Right, driving in Bridgeport, April first. Yeah. yeah. That was crazy. Right. And, and uh, Leon Weir worked. That was his record with Marvin, I think, right? I think he produced that. Yeah, he might have produced He, wor- he worked on a bunch. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So uh, we're going to give a listen to it right now. I want to thank uh, everybody here. Margie Jasper, of course, always nice to see Margie helping uh, push your music and, and working real hard. 32 years, right? Yep. February. February, February. That's right. Yep. Yeah, the solo record in the works. Margie Jasper, yeah, one day, yeah. One day. <laughs> and uh, Chris, always great to see you. 
of course. And uh, thanks for blessing us with another great release. The One. There you go if you're watching on TV. Uh, ChrisJasper.com. And, of course, Michael Jasper. He's 21 years right now. Doesn't look a day over uh, 18. <laughs> and he's working real hard. And he's going to be uh, duetting with uh, Alicia Keys one day. <laughs> I know so. Alicia Keys horn player, so. Yeah, Dave, Dave Watson, yeah. So, okay. uh, got a connection. Yeah, th- thanks for uh, <laughs> thanks for all the great music uh, from the Jaspers, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna make Marvin Gaye proud wherever he is right now. I'm sure he's smiling down on you. All right, this is Chris Jasper. What's going on right here on eighty eight point five WBOF, the Upper Room with Joe Kelly. <laughs> 